today. Welcome to my talk. My is a middle attack by name collision, cost analysis, and vulnerability assessment in the new GCLD era. I'm Alfred Chen from University of Michigan, a PhD student, and my co-authors are various researchers, Eric Ostwell, Matt Thomas, and my PhD advisor, Professor Molly Mao. So let's get started. Um, so in our work, uh, so we study a newly exposed man in the middle attack due to two phenomena, name collision and double pad query leakage. So both of which will be introduced in detail later. So first, let's focus on the high level picture. So in high level, an uh, attacker just needs to register a certain vulnerable domain and, and configure a proxy server and uh, the, the web traffic of a large number of internet users can be automatically redirected to the attacker. So with this, the attacker can just uh, use job sensitive data like password or just do some phishing attack, code injection, and even if the connection is encrypted, uh, he can use some recently uh, discovered downgrade attacks like freak or logjam to read and modify the traffic. So to understand how this attack works, let me first introduce some background. So first, the um, public DNS namespace. So as we can see here, so uh, the DNS system is organized in the uh, is organized here hierarchically, uh, consisting of this DNS root servers, top level domain TLD, and second level domain SLDs. The SLD holder is called registrant, who pay to register a domain. And uh, the TLD operators are also called TLD registries, just some terms. So alongside with the public DNS namespace, we also got the internal DNS namespaces, which are, which are typically set up in some local network, for example, in many companies to, uh, with, uh, by setting up their own uh, DNS uh, servers. So this internal nam namespace are uh, usually very, uh, usually, I just intended it to be private and I I should not be visible uh, outside of the internal names, uh, of the, uh, outside of the internal network. So to isolate these namespaces and to prevent name collision, the local network usually use the undelegated. Oh, okay. So I skip a size. So uh, if so, this is very important. So uh, so if the name, the same name, is used both in the internal network and the public DNS namespace, we call it a name collision. So to, so to isolate these namespaces and prevent name collision, the local network usually use those TLD strings that have not been delegated in the public namespace as their internal TLDs. So this is what name collision is and all the internal namespace stuff. So next, I will introduce the WPAD query leakage problem. So WPAD stands for uh, Web Proxy Auto Discovery, which is a protocol designed for uh, browsers or OSs to automatically configure their proxy. So this is typically used in some local networks, uh, for example, in many companies where the clients are restricted from talking to the public internet. So for this uh, configuration process to work, this, the client will issue a very special query, which prepends WPAD, WPAD, to the local domain name. And in the response, he will get the information to configure his own web proxy, and subsequently, all the web traffic from this client will be routed through a proxy. So as we can see, this proxy can intercept all the web traffic here. And so it's actually very security sensitive, and such leakage of, of this type of queries to the um, public namespace should not happen. But surprisingly, this is happening now. And as we can see, uh, based on our own measurement study, uh, from just two out of 13 DNS, uh, DNS root servers, so there, are o there are over 20 million such queries are leaked to the public namespace every day. But in the past, this is actually not a very serious problem because the usage of undelegated TLD strings is the internal TLD. So because of this, all these uh, WPAD queries will, will uh, this leaked WPAD queries will just be answered by the DNS root servers saying no such name exists with an error code which is called NX domain. So because of this, these queries are not easily, or was not easily uh, exploitable by some registrant. But this situation just get changed because of the new GTLD program where uh, over 9,000 new GTLDs have been added to the public namespace just since 2013, making it the largest expansion ever. 
So as a result, many of these popular, uh, many of these popular ITLDs, internal TLDs, are also delegated. So this breaks the implied assumption made in the uh, internal namespace planning we just discussed earlier, and this, allow, this allows the name creation problem to happen. So now this stub query are leaked to the pub, pub, uh, are leaked to the public namespace and can be resolved by some registrant. So as we can see, the name creation problem created by this new trend have a direct impact in this double pad query leakage problem. And if the attacker got to control uh, where he just registered this colliding domain in the public namespace, he can just, inst he can just instruct the clients to use an attacker-controlled uh, man's middle proxy and thus cause all the exploits we just mentioned earlier. So this is the attack focused in our paper. We call it double pad uh, name collision problem. So in our work, we performed the first systematic study on this double pad name collision attack. And first, what we do is that we study the fundamental problem. So why the, double pad, the, why the internal double pad queries are leaked to the public namespace? So these query, queries are intended to be resolved only from within the local network, and such leakage should not happen, just like, mentioned, I, just like I mentioned earlier. So next, we systematically assess the vulnerability, stat, uh, the vulnerability status of this attack in the wild. So our main approach is to propose a, 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 so our main approach is to propose a measurable definition and a qualification of the attack surface of this vulnerability. And one insight we have is that most of the domains only have leaked queries very infrequently with low query, with low query uh, volume, making them not practically exploitable. So in our definition, we want it to be more accurate and useful, thus we define it to be uh, the domains can persistently expose large number of victims. We call them highly vulnerable domains, HVDs for short. So this, this HVDs need to have high, query, high leakage persistence. For example, the WPI queries are leaked every day. And meanwhile, uh, this, this leakage needs to have high, high leakage volume Thus, once these domains are registered, large number of victims can be continuously exported. As we can see from this definition, this HVD is assess quantifiably attractive targets for adversaries. So, uh, to perform this analysis, we use a data set with two-year NX domain traffic, which is those, uh, those query traffic with non-existent domain response which is collected at the DNS root server, ANJ, which is able to capture the leaked WPAD queries. So first, let's explore why the leakage happens. So first, we measure where the leakage comes from, and these are the top 12 high leakage ASs, which uh, altogether um, account for around 85% of total WPAD query leakage in the wild. So surprisingly, we find out that actually 10 of them are well-known home access network ASs. And for the rest two, they run the, um, the, the, uh, the, so they run the open uh, resolvers in the public namespace, and which is also commonly configured by home users. So this shows that actually, the home access network ASs are the dominant source of the leakage, and, the, and the, the, long, the, the underlying cause of this leakage is very likely related to some, some user behaviors at home. So then we go inspect the domain suffix of these leakages, of these uh, leakage ASs. So what we find out is that actually, instead of the home devices, most of the domain suffix are actually corporate network related. For example, we saw lots of uh, domain suffix uh, which are involved to company, for example, the, the defense contractor company or consulting or real, real, or real estate, which should not originate from home. So this leads to a hypothesis that maybe these leaks are coming from individuals using corporate, uh, using corporate laptops at home. So from this cause, the leakage traffic should have a very diverse set of domain suffix, which are actually created by the user machines from just all sorts of different corporate networks, and this should create a significant entropy of the domain suffix. 
So that's why we use a domain suffix entropy uh, metric to validate our hypothesis. So these are the top 11 uh, high entropy ASCs uh, we measured. So we find out that actually 10 out, of, uh, 10 out of them are overlapped with the top 12 high leakage ASCs we showed earlier. This validated our hypothesis and shows that actually a very likely cause of this leakage is end user devices mistakenly issuing internal queries when they are used outside of the internal network, for example, at home. But wait, uh, why these devices are making such mistakes? The, it, the, the DHCP server should automatically configure the domain suffix when the network changes. So we set up some local test bed and try to explore why. So we actually find some common OS settings in which the devices can indeed make such mistakes. So for example, after setting the OS domain name or uh, setting the domain search list, this domain is actually hard-coded in the OS in regardless what the DHCP says, and this causes the devices to still issue internal queries when they are used outside of the, of the internal network. So now that we have a good, uh, we have a good understanding of, uh, of why the leakage happens, so next we apply the attack surface quantification to systematically assess the vulnerability status. So remember, the attack surface, HVD, is, is defined to have both high leakage persistence and high leakage volume. So we first define the leakage. Uh, we, we first define persistence as leakage in every P day period for at least n days. For example, if P is 1 and N is 365, this means that the domain has WPAD query leakage every day for one year, show very high leakage, uh, showing very high leakage persistence. So with this defined, so next we try to find the high query volume domain set. And in, at a high level, what we do is that we try to systematically explore different PNN until local maximum value is reached. So we have evaluated our method and find it to be effective in finding the HVDs satisfying our, our definition in the victim ASCs. And for more details, please refer to our paper. So with uh, this HVDs, <coughs> Excuse me. So, so with this HVD is quantified, so next we apply the attack surface uh, characterization and trying to find out uh, and, and trying to understand more about the attack and the possible defense solutions. So this is the most interesting finding we have. So basically a large number of the attack surface domain are actually victim AS specific, meaning that for different ASs, there are actually very few overlapped uh, these attack surface domains between them. So, for example, for the top 10 high leakage ASCs, so all of their, there are actually around 9,000 different HVDs in total, but, only, but there are only 90 of them are in common among these ASCs. So we, so we take some ASCs, some top ASCs, to take a closer look. So basically, we compare them pairwisely about their HVD set, and we try to understand why the domains in the area A is not included in the other AS, in the, in the HVD set of the, the other AS. So basically, we found out that actually over 80% uh, of, of these HVDs are actually does not have any uh, query leakages in the other AS. So this is a unique feature which we will use later in our defense uh, discussion. So for these this HVDs we just found, once they are registered, the actual exploitation can happen at any time. So next, we use the zone file and host data and try to measure the current registration status. So as of uh, September last year, we find out that the overall HVD registration ratio is only 7 to, 18, uh, 7 to 13%, which shows that it's actually still in the early stage. We also estimate the uh, we also estimate the registration trend of this, of this HVD domains, and we find that actually or around 60% of the attack surface domains of this new GLDs in one top leakage AS are likely to be fully registered in just two years. So this, this, so this result shows that actually, so even though the current status is still in the beginning, the, actual, the attack window is actually opening very quickly, and uh, which implies that actually now would be a very good time to start proactive mitigation. So now I will talk about some of the remediation strategies uh, in different levels in the DNS ecosystem which can help solve this problem. So for the so first, for the new GTLD registries. 
So they, uh, so for them, they should at least ensure that these uh, HVDs are not registered, or with, uh, or they can have more restricted or more scrutinized registration uh, process to ensure that they are not falling into the wrong hand. So uh, for this to be effective, it, it is estimated to have around uh, 900 different registries to participate in the deployment. And also in the next level, the victim ASs, so they can actually prevent this by filtering those third-party courier leakages. So uh, as we showed earlier, the HVD set actually AS specific, which means that each AS needs to have their own customized uh, filtering list. So they are estimated to have like 11,000 uh, deployment points, which is actually a, a, a magnitude higher than the, other, than the new GLT registry level, as we can see. So also third, as we show in our cost analysis, the end devices needs to, needs to stop mistakenly issue these internal queries to the public namespace. For example, they can stop the OS hard coding behavior like we mentioned earlier. This can fundamentally solve the problem, but the thing is that the deployment effort is actually much higher than, than, than the other two layers. So uh, this is estimated to be over like six million deployment uh, points according to our data set. So to maximize the chance to prevent this vulnerability to expand, the best, the best choice would be using these uh, approaches jointly. So considering the serious and disseminated nature of this vulnerability, as we just show here, actions need to, needs to be taken as soon as possible. So to summarize, in this work, we performed a systematic study of this newly exposed third-pad name collision attack in the new GTD era. We quantified the problem severity and uncovered the likely problem cost. We also proposed a candidate attack surface definition and use it to, quanti uh, and use it to quantify the vulnerability status in the wild. Our result shows a uh, real threat to internet users in the wild, uh, which actually provides a strong and urgent message to deploy proactive protection. So we also discussed some remediation strategies in different levels in the, in the DNS ecosystem and you know, together with some em em empirical data analysis. So our work serves as the first study as one type of navigation problem in the new GT era, and hopefully this can inspire some follow-up study in this work. Um, so as some of you might have noticed, there's a US third alert on our work. It just came out just like two days ago. Uh, I, and I encourage you guys to take a closer look. So with this, I would like to take questions. Thanks. Hi, thanks for the talk. So to be clear, the attack you're concerned about is not STLD registrants, but it's some, like if, say, Evil Corp was one right, of the right. things going out and their internal TLD was dot Evil Corp, you're worried about some other person have registering the GTLD, yes. or not, no, registering's no. not the right word, creating the GTLD.EvilCorp and stealing their WPAD traffic. Uh, uh, are you, so, so just make sure that it's, it's so it's actually, a, so in our scenario, the attacker is the malicious registrant. So the, the, the register a domain called, for example, effort.evil, and the evil is the new GTLD. For example, the internal domain uses effort.evo, and, uh, and, and it, it's actually colliding with the uh, effort.evo, which, which the attacker registered in the public namespace. And but this, that only works if .evil is already a GTLD. Right, right, right. But, but there are actually, just till now, I think there are over 900 such new GLDs have dedicated in just two years. And right. there's all sorts of different names, and you can just pick the one you want. Right, so you're worried about someone creating a GTL, like the badness happens when a GTLD is created that happens to match right. the company's right. internal right. TLD. Right, right, so, so with more new, new GTLDs delegated, this can happen just more extensively. And actually just now, there are actually many of these uh, very popular internal, t uh, the internal TLDs are already delegated. Right. So the evil may just already be happening now. Right, okay.